A great day here in Memphis, Tennessee to start the 2008 U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. It's the finals. I'm standing here with the number one player in the world, Rocky Carson. Rocky, I mean, you've won eight tournaments last season, and here you are playing in the finals of the biggest tournament there is, U.S. Open. But you've got Kane Wozolinchuk in your way here. How do you feel about this match right now? Oh, it's going to be a challenge. It's been a challenge. Uh, you know, he's coming back from two years off of racquetball, and uh, he's pretty fired up playing the best ball I've ever seen him play. So uh, I got my hands full, but uh, you know what? That's what you work for. Well, after a two-year break and not having Kane around, is there anything different going on in your head? Are you seeing anything different noticeably in his game right now that you want to focus on? He's playing a, a full, complete game. And uh, you can't just pick at one spot at his game and really get points. He's going to adjust quickly. And with what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to run him. I'm going to try to run him. I'm going to try to uh, force him to hit shots that he's not comfortable with. If I can get ahead in some of the rallies and, and uh, you know, make him uh, hit some shots that he, he, he just doesn't feel good with, with uh, good positioning on the court, I feel confident about my uh, outcome today. Well, Kane was number one before he left the sport two years ago. Now, Rocky is number one, so this should be a great matchup. This is a grand slam, and it is the finals. Rocky, we wish you luck. Yeah, thanks. I love this. Kane, you left the sport two years ago. You were number one in the world. Now, you got a number 11 by your name, but you are in a grand slam playing the current number one player in the world. How are you feeling right now going against Rocky? The good part is I got two ones beside my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I feel great. Uh, had a great match yesterday. Uh, played remarkable. Um, you know, I've played Rocky a couple times this year, and uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. It's a grand slam. The stadium is full. It's a huge 360 glass. I mean, it's going to be a lot of energy in this room today. Anything in your head right now? Is there anything going to rattle you? Is there anything that can take you off your game right now? No. Nah, I've been playing this game too long. I just come play my game and, and uh, have some fun. Well, a lot of fans out here screaming your name, so it should be a great one. You know, he's the number one player in the world, Rocky Carson, but Kane left the sport two years ago, and he was number one. So this should be an exciting matchup, man. This is going to be great. All right, good luck. Thank you. The 2008 U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by Panasonic, ideas for life. And by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at flooring centers everywhere. And Lucite International, the worldwide leader in crystal clear acrylic. To learn more, visit lucite.com. And USA Racquetball, your link to the greatest game on earth. To learn more about how racquetball can improve your quality of life, go to usaracquetball.com. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. The Choice Hotel's U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players and all of us truly what real strength and courage is all about. Welcome to Memphis, Tennessee. Another amazing matchup here. We've got the U.S. Open of racquetball. 2008, I'm Sean Royster here alongside Doug Ganim. The crowd is fired up, and you can't ask for a better matchup here. Kane Wazelinchuk, who left the game as the number one player two years ago, and now he's playing the current number one player. I mean, what, what do we expect to see here now, Ganim? Uh, this is just a dream come true. You know, uh, Kane has had the absolute worst draw. He's had to beat uh, Mitch Williams, Alvaro Beltran, Jack Huzak, and now he's got to face Rocky Carson. If he wins this tournament, uh, it's it's not uh, going to be anything short of amazing. Uh, he's really had to go through it. But uh, he had a scare with Alvaro Beltran and went five with him. Everybody else, he's pretty much just blistered. So this is going to be a tough match for Rocky. He is number one, but he knows that this guy here is perhaps the greatest player ever. 
Well, that's the thing. You know, he's ranked number 11, Kane is. And, but it's just not an accurate number. Watching at home, you didn't know what was going on. Had a suspension there. He was off for two years. So he dominated the sport. He basically won this tournament three straight. Nobody other than Sudden Montrek has ever won this event four times. So Kane's looking to make history here. Right. And right. he's come out with vengeance. He came back to this tour. And he is fired up. And the crowd is fired up, and they're ready to see this because it's basically two number one players playing against each other for this U.S. Open title. No question about it. And, uh, and Kane, uh, if he wins this tournament, it'll be his fourth in a row. He won it three times in a row. He was off for two years. Sudsy's uh, four titles, uh, none of them were consecutive. He won, could lose the next year, then win the next year, and then lose the next year. Uh, this really is unprecedented, what we're watching here. And Kane starts off the match with an ace. So, um, yeah. kind of speaking of setting the precedence, I think that's a good way to start. Kane was Yeah, he, uh, he's got all the weapons. Uh, I was curious if he was going to come out and lob serve Rocky or, uh, or come out with the heat, and uh, that question's been answered. And personally, the last time I saw these two match up, you know, of course they've played within the last few years, but the last time I saw them play was here at this U.S. Open when Kane was dominating everybody. He just smashed everybody. I mean, it was like nobody took a game off him. Nobody even scored maybe more than seven or eight points. And the last time these two played was in that event when they matched up, and Rocky took him all the way the distance. If you remember that match, Doug, this place was fired up. It was, uh, you know, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10. 12, 10, 10 in the fifth. Yeah, yep. and it turned out to be 12, 10 in a barn burner tiebreaker. Yeah, Rocky was the only guy in those three years when, uh, oh, look at that, between the legs. That's an avoidable hinder. That'll be a point for uh, Kane. Over here in the corner. No, on the shot. But uh, the oh, yeah. only player that really gave Just Rocky sure. or, or, uh, Kane a run was Rocky Carson. So I'm really hopeful for a great Thank match you. here today. Quick rules of the game. You see Kane up in the front, standing between the two solid lines. That's the service box. He's got to hit the ball. Pass that second solid line and not hit the back wall on the fly. Um, got to get the ball on one bounce. And this is the best of a series of five that you play to 11. You got to win by two. Rocky Carson now in the service box, serving one, two. Rocky likes to hit this Z serve. Uh, the problem, though, is Kane is left-handed. He's going to be forced to probably do that right there. He'll set up like he's going to hit the Z, and then he'll probably push it over to Kane's backhand. Not the most comfortable serve for Rocky. Rather hit the Z, but uh, you got to do what you got to do here. This guy's uh, incredible on both sides and and left-handed to boot. I love Rocky's variety of serves. He's just got so many of them. He, he, can, he can hit a, a variety of serves from the same spot, which is another great tool and a great weapon out there. Is that you got to disguise these serves. Yep, and but as you can see there, uh, it went right into Kane's wheelhouse, and he laid that thing down. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> about, so disguised. <laughs> it was 180, about a half inch off the floor. Little heat from Kane. That's a setup. Did not kill the ball. Rocky did not kill it. Left it up. Yeah, Rocky cannot miss those yeah, setups. Can't miss it. Big setup off the back wall. He's got to lay that down. <laughs> You know, Jack Huzak, uh, we watched that match last week on the Tennis Channel, and uh, uh, he got set up after set up from Kane and could not lay the ball down. We'll see if Rocky can do a little better. Good Z, spins him around, set up Kane. Probably should have been the hinder there. Oh, that's a good shot. Uh, it's here Kane now. Uh, got the microphone I mean, I can on. take a full swing at that. Hey. I can take a full swing at that. I mean, come on, you've seen me play long enough. I can see anything from anywhere. Yeah, you hear Kane trying to argue a, a hinder there. What do you yeah, think, Doug? I think it was a pretty good uh, case, actually. I think there was a hinder in the middle of that rally. Yeah, that's a great get from Rocky. Great get. Oh, oh wow. almost got it up there. Unfortunately for Rock, uh, coming into this U.S. Open, Kane gave him a pretty good beatdown at the last pro stop where they played. Uh, I think it was in Kentucky. And uh, Kane apparently just waxed him. 
There's a setup. He left it up a little bit. Wow. Oh, look at these guys. Yeah. Yeah, I expect that from both these players. They're going to lay themselves out on the floor and make the other guy kill the ball two or three times per rally. We'll be right back for more racquetball on the Tennis Channel. Rocky definitely taking his time here, trying to think of what's a good serve for Kane. He's had answers so far. You know, we watched this last week against uh, Jack Huzak. Uh, Jack could not find a serve to score any points. Well, Kane lost it in the, in the uh, loose site. Lost him. Let's talk about that loose site right now. I mean, we always call this a glass court. It's just obviously it's a glass court, but this loose site international is just a great product for this made-for-TV court. It's really incredible. It is so durable and gorgeous to look at, and it plays true. And then for TV, it's great because uh, we don't have any uh, bending of light. So it's a nice, true picture. Oh, wow. wow. What a shot. Jeez. We constantly talk about the fundamentals of racquetball and how low you need to get. And most of the errors that happen from the amateur players, they just stand straight up. And man, Kane is just a great example of how you're supposed to do it. Just gets down completely on that. Takes yeah. a swing. Yeah. That Panasonic uh, instant replay, you can see his knees are just dragging on the floor when he rolls that ball. Oh, look at that. You notice Kane oh, had his hand up he there. He did. He wanted a hinder, and then he shoveled it in the corner, and then uh, kind of put his hand down like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> and another great tip for you amateurs at home or people playing racquetball tournament play, you put your hand up looking for a hinder, don't ever stop play, because if you don't get the call, you got to live, live with the shot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is getting oh, a little so ugly for Rocky too. early here. Uh, looks... Terribly familiar to the last match we saw Kane play, where uh, his opponents struggle when they're in the box to find ways to score points. And in the rallies, it's mostly Kane controlling center court and the other guy diving all over the place. Doug, I know you, I chuckle here, but it's just such an empty feeling when you, your opponent, you <laughs> stand up there and like, what the hell is this guy? Yeah, it is. Good save. Go fly kill. <laughs> That is actually kind of a good Oh, there we go. That's the right call. And Rocky's yeah. not going to be happy about it. Yeah, but that ball bounced twice in the service box. Uh, and it looks game, like he hit it real low. But uh, the Panasonic instant replay, you'll see the, the ball bounces once, about two feet from the front wall, and the second bounce is actually in the service box. And uh, Kane was right about at the dotted line, so that's only one step for him to get up to that service box. So that's a, that's a good call. At this level, you know, at this level, you pretty much got to roll it out because they're so fast. If you don't flat roll it out, uh, you're going to have a hinder. Absolutely. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, Rocky. Yeah. yeah, Rocky came out of the court and told the referee that he owed him one, but the fact is you make a great point there. At this level, I mean, that's a hinder. I mean, everybody's getting everything out there. Exactly. You have to give them the benefit of the dive, and, uh, you know, they can cover a lot of court with a dive. Bad shot. Big setup. setup. This will be. Oh, you're. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with Rocky on that one. That ball bounced twice past the service box. <laughs> that ball bounced twice past the service box. The second bounce what was, was that, just Jay? past Point? the uh, second All right. red Good line. Shot. Thanks, Rocky. Bad referee. You know, whether it's a good call or a bad call, the worst thing Rocky can do right now is start entertaining conversation with the referee and let this whole what call, you know, all that get in his head. He's got to let this stuff go and just play racquetball right now. No question. The referee's, uh, the referee's not blowing these balls on the floor. Rocky is. So, uh, yeah, he's got to get it together here and play some uh, solid racquetball. Like I said, this is a familiar sight. Uh, this guy, Kane, puts so much pressure on you, you feel like you have to do more than you're really comfortable doing. And uh, that's when the mistakes creep in. Kane is oh, unbelievable that is right now. Nasty. <laughs> it's just nasty. Right. I mentioned a rollout earlier. Uh, that was a rollout. That's, yeah, that's when the, the ball hits, yeah, it hits so low on the front wall that it doesn't even bounce when it comes out. It just starts rolling on the floor. You have to pick it up with a shovel. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. Again, Kane from his Kane knees. From his knees. I mean, watch this Panasonic instant replay on this shot. This is incredible. He goes down on his knees and re-kills this ball like it's <laughs> just another day at the office. Unreal. I mean, and as quick as you could do it, Kane Wazelinchuk has game point in this first game against the number one ranked player in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There it another is. Skip ball. I mean, it's just. Man, that was quick. Yeah, that was quick. First I mean, game in the can. Kane Wazelinchuk, 11 2. When we get back, more exciting racquetball here at the 2008 U.S. Open Racquetball Championships on the Tennis Channel. Crowd fired up here, they're loving this. Rackball's exciting. Whether or not it was a blowout or not, it was 11 2 in the first game. These two players are entertaining, they're the best in the game. So, I mean, really, whether it's a blowout or not, everybody in this room just loves watching these two guys. Well, what they're seeing is the game played at a level that perhaps it's never been played at before. So, regardless of the score, you're getting to see really genius out there. The things that uh, Kane is doing have, have really never been done in racquetball before. The power coupled with the soft hands, hitting the ball from his knees. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. Look wow, at that. I mean, that's incredible. Well, let's talk about this for a second. You're bringing up some history now. I yeah. mean, there are some names out there that just come to mind as you're making that point. There's Sudji Machik, there's yep. Cliff Swain. You go back even to Marty, what, Marty Hogan, Hogan, Mike Yellen. Yep, and I'm going to say this right now. Uh, all those players were legends. But each of them had kind of a specific game style. You know, either it was power or it was speed and control. You know, Mike, Mike Yellen wore you out with, uh, you know, with incredible control. He controlled center court. Cliff Swain blew you off the court with his uh, incredible power. Uh, Sudsy brought power and speed to the game. He blistered the ball and he had incredible speed. This guy has all those attributes and then these unbelievable soft pillow hands. He can take a 200 mile an hour ball and all of a sudden hit it 40, and I'm going to say four miles an hour, dink it in the corner, and the other guy's knees just buckle. And uh, that's what I think ultimately, when his career's over, what, what, what will set him apart. That's a skip ball. And that's what will set him apart from the other legends in the game. Yeah, you can't argue that he's he's right. He's right there. I mean, he's he doesn't he's have the resume yet, Sean. Right. Uh, you know, he's got to play another five, six years to build the domination that Sudsy and Cliff and Hogan and Yellen. But at this point, from my perspective, the only thing we're missing now is some time. Right. Yeah, it's kind of a matter of when. I mean, it's, it's, yes, it is. The record of world titles is, I think, five. Or yes. six, five or six. Is um, that right? I think it's six, actually. He's won it, uh, Kane's won it three times. Uh, well, he, he would be at five right now, I believe, if he hadn't uh, had his absence from the tour. Gee, oh. uh, that's a great example right there. How low percentage that shot is for anybody, whether you're a pro or an amateur. He shoots that from his ear yeah. and tries to you know, 38 feet in the back and he hits a splat roll out. Yeah, now we've seen that before. You know, the legends, Cliff Swain, Sudzy Manchik was probably the best of all time at that particular shot, hitting that backhand. Thunder splat, and I'm going to even say uh, Sudzy was probably even better at it than Kane. Uh, that was really his bread and butter. But what you're seeing with Kane is the ability to do the best things that the greatest champions did and add his uh, really soft hands. Another thing I like about Kane is his variety of serves. You know, you know, you know, he's, just, he's just not missing. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, you know, Swain, uh, he would hit three, pretty much three serves. He had a blistering down the wall uh, serve. He had a blistering cross court, and then he'd just absolutely break your knees with a wide angle. And he'd work those three serves, you know, to death. And Sudsy, same thing. He had three big drive serves that he just beat your brains in with in his prime. You're seeing Kane in his prime, and I don't think he's hit the same serve more than three times. Right. <laughs> you know, he's got 40 different serves. Well, it really poses uh, problems for his opponents. And I never saw Cliff, you know, I've watched him play for 10 years on tour, and I never watched him hit a lob serve. No, he really, he really runs on pretty much three serves. Now, he's got more variation than that. Cliff will tell you that he'll hit those same three serves different speeds, different heights, 
Uh, so it equates to you know more than just three serves, but literally came using lobs, using drives. Uh, you know he's got 20, 25 different serves he can hit, and he does them all well. This is unreal. This yeah. is you know the number one player in the world right now. Getting and absolutely embarrassed. It just yeah. it, it, there's 19 to two. <laughs> <laughs> 19 to 2. Oh, Lord. I mean, you're just watching the game played at a level that it's never been played before. One, nine, you know, Rocky is, is just out of it. He's, he's having an out-of-body experience right now. He's, uh, he's looking down on the court, seeing himself play, and just can't believe what he's seeing. We're going to take another break here. We'll be right back for more exciting racquetball. Welcome back to Memphis. We're underway here. The match is going. What this is get. just insane. How fast. Look at this. Yeah, look at Kane. He's up. Uh, he's up. Oh, wow. He's up 9-0, and he's just diving all over the place. Look at him. He, I mean, he doesn't need to do anything at this point. He can just mail it in. But he's not satisfied with that. He wants to bludgeon Rocky Carson. Yeah, he's, he's ready to make a statement. He is, he is. Here's Rocky. had an absolute bunny in front of the service box. You'd think Kane would say, all right, go ahead, bury it. <laughs> he lays out on the floor and makes Rocky take three more shots to try to win. Skip ball. First shot he's missed in about 30 minutes. First shot he's missed in 30 minutes. If we've been playing for 30 minutes, I don't even know. I'll have to get the timer out. You, can't make you hear ball, some right? noises from the crowd, but again, you look at the Panasonic replay there. You can see that ball does barely skip. It was just, it was close. Yeah, I love these, uh, love these Panasonic HD cameras. You can really see that ball. Be nice to see. Rocky get some points on the ball. There's a setup. Right. I mean, Rocky's, Rocky's just. Doing nothing. Great get. Yeah. Uh, Rocky, he had four shots to win that rally, and uh, it was 0 for 3 to start, and finally got the last one in there. But I think to what's really, what's really to watch here is, and, and I think kids, if you're watching this at home, this happens in all sports, uh, where you get these big leads, and most athletes will just try to post home from there. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes your opponent gets a second wind and they, uh, they come back. That's a great shot from that. But uh, you're watching an athlete who's got his opponent completely under his shoe, and he won't give him an inch. He's diving after every loose ball, and this is just a great lesson for anybody that plays any sport. When you got them, step on their head. You know, oh, when you got them down, step on their neck. That's what's going on. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, neck, the neck is, at this point, we're pushing harder to try to break the spine. <laughs> the, the esophagus is closed. He's just trying to get, get enough pressure on the neck to get the, the spinal cord to snap. Yeah, he's just ruthless out there. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is ruthless. Yeah, if, uh, if he had a knife right now... Uh, We'd have to call the paramedics. It'd be serious blood loss. And that's it right there. Yeah, 11-2, 11-2. And there you have it. Kane Wazelinchuk does what he came out here to do. Dominates Rocky. It's 22 to 4 in total score. We're going to take a break and see if Rocky can get into this and make this a match. It's the finals here at the 2008 U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. Oh, yes. Welcome back to the Tennis Channel, but we are watching racquetball and the best racquetball possibly we've ever seen. Kane Wazelinchuk, number 11 in the world, but not really. Take away one of those ones. I mean, he was number one in the world before he left the sport two years ago. Now he's playing Rocky Carson, the current number one player, and he's smoking him. <laughs> I'm going to say this, Sean. You can't beat Rocky Carson worse than this. I mean, I mean this is as bad as it gets. I mean, I I've mean, never uh, seen him lose like this. Yeah, I mean, he just... He's a phenomenal player, and you're watching a phenomenal player that can barely score a point. Like I said, we're, we're witnessing a level of play that's never been seen before in racquetball. But we'll see if Rocky can put something together in game three. He's got to. It's desperation time for him. And as you can see, it's just Kane Wazelinchuk. He's a just set up for him. Now he didn't put it down. Oh, jeez. Oh, 
Yes. A good example of Kane Wazalinchuk, another weapon out of the maybe 50 that we we'll mentioned today, is that he's also got the ability to dive and make a shot with it, which most oh, yeah. players will dive and just flick it up and just make a, a quick defensive play, but he can dive and kill. Exactly. I mean, he, he's got it all. Um, it's, it's amazing what he's doing here. And I yeah, will say Rocky is not putting the ball down. That's probably the first flat kill shot I've seen out of him in this whole match. Uh, uh, but it's the pressure. I mean, when your opponent's putting that kind of pressure on you, you know, it's tough to lay it all the way down. You end up making more mistakes, and uh, that's really what Rocky's done. We saw the stats during the uh, timeout there, and uh, Kane is leading Rocky in every single category dramatically. Yeah, so now you're going to see Kane goof around a little bit. You know, that's a low percentage, kind of a silly shot. Um, at this point, you know he's got the match, you know, well in hand, and uh, he's going to try to give the fans a little bit of a show here. Rocky's got some great sponsors sitting um, courtside here. Some of the big dogs at Motorola and Verizon Wireless. Take another look at the Panasonic replay there. Yeah, I disagree with that one. That was good. Where are you guys? You guys awake? As you see Kane talking to... He's talking to the linesman. Right. Yeah, he's not talking to the fans. He's talking to the linesman. There's guys on both sides. But truthfully, the only person that has a chance to see whether that skipped is the head referee sitting on the back wall. The guys on the... Just a replay. You sure? The guys on the side wall are not going to see a skip ball hit at 200 Two miles an hour. <laughs> they can see double bounces, uh, but they're not going to see uh, a skip there. The head referee's got the best view, and uh, he made the call. Rocky still has yet to find a serve that has any success rate against Kane. I mean, it, it, you can feel the helpless, helplessness in the air. I mean, Rocky's just out there. Get me off this court. Yeah, you just, yeah, it's desperation yeah. shots for him. Just. Oh, you mean you, you walk up in the service box and you're bouncing the ball and you're thinking, what am I going to hit this guy? Yeah. That, that's kind of Rocky's bread and butter. I mean, it's not uncommon to see that flat backhand kill shot 20 or 30 times in a match. And how many times have we seen that so far? Oh, I think that's the first one. Right, exactly. You know? And that's what Kane does to you. He pulls you out of your normal game. That's the difference between the great players. You, you see them come in with just a real definite game plan. Kind of also, but they come in with a definite game plan. And it's tough when you got a guy like Kane, because you know Rocky got up this morning, had his routine, got his normal breakfast and his stretch and his routine. Came in here with the idea of how he was going to stick to his game plan. But then you play Kane, and Kane just completely squashes every yeah, idea you have. Yeah, within the first, probably, Within the first three minutes, he knew whatever game plan he had for today wasn't going to work. So now he's trying like heck to find something that'll work. Well, this is a hot streak right here, but uh, unfortunately, of the, of the three points, Kane gave him two. He blew a little overhead skipper and hit a couple loose balls. Uh, Rocky has yet to hit a good serve. That was just another setup off the bat. Wow. You know, that serve, I mean, uh, there's quite a few lower level players that would be able to step up and kill that ball. It's a setup, comes out of the corner. You know, uh, Rocky needs to find a serve that will get this guy to hit a defensive shot. Oh, that's no good. Wow. Look at the power. The power, I mean, he was right there. Rocky's right there, and the ball just flat out blew past him. Yeah, he uh, he just absolutely blew it right by him. And you know what's interesting about Kane is he, he's got that pace right there, but he doesn't show it to you very often. He hit that, he hit that ball. Are you kidding me? What is he holding up for? For you. Ah! What is he holding up for? Just like you say to me, that's the only shot he has. Yeah, that's 
That's a good call. Wow. I think Rocky's thinking in his head. Was that the okay. outdoor rack? <laughs> Next time I won't. Reverse over <laughs> exactly. Held up for your head. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Next wow. time I won't. I'm going to swing it down. Well, she should. If he's <laughs> I mean, if I'm playing somebody, he doesn't appreciate Thanks, the fact that I'm holding up for his head. <laughs> Then I'm swinging next time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if Kane Wasilenchek is a guy you want to hit in the head though. He's yeah, that's a good point because he hits a little harder, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, payback is uh, yeah. <laughs> painful. Let's you call know, it that. You know, Doug, I love your analogy. Of, oh, look at that! <laughs> oh, good shot. Oh, look at the hands. Oh, she's gonna screw with them a little bit here. Look at the hands. Look at the hands. Set up. Wow, oh, look at the passion from Kane. I mean, he's fighting. I love your analogy of tennis meets <laughs> UFC. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, this is a mixed martial arts meets tennis. That's right. That's what racquetball is. It's, uh, uh, it, it can be pretty violent. I mean, these guys are hitting the ball close to 200 miles an hour, uh, bumping into each other. We had a guy uh, get hit earlier in the week with a racket. The guy broke the racket over the other guy's head. Yeah, that was the number two player in the world. Yeah, the, the uh, emergency room, uh, they were picking graphite out of his head. Oh, look at the down on the knees. Again from the knees. From the knees. Watch that shot. Let's bring up our Panasonic uh, HD instant replay. Look at this shot. This was actually a hinder ball. A Rocky hit the ball right back at himself. Uh, Kane could have lifted his hand and asked for a hinder. Instead, he drops to his knees and <laughs> rips across California. <laughs> I mean, this is just unreal. Oh, wow. Oh, the serve is perfect. Yeah, Rocky played a pretty solid point there. I mean, that was just a thunder backhand. You think of all the greats here, uh, you know, Sudzy owned that shot. Well, he's showing us he's got it too. The lobs, the drives. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> it was almost like he couldn't see it in the glass. That's what I thought. And then he flicks that thing. <laughs> Watch this on our Panasonic replay. Unbelievable. Rocky hits a two mile an hour jam into the glass and he steps over and flicks it in the corner like it's nothing. Unreal. I'm telling you, I've never seen the game played at this level. Ah, oh, I've never seen it. I mean, this is just it's insane. What a short lived insane. lead for Rocky Carson. And we had a 3 0 lead. And now Kane Wazalincha comes right back. We're going to take another break here. We'll be right back for more exciting racquetball. Welcome back to the Tennis Channel. It's the 2008 U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Three. Skip ball. That's a skip ball. Both the sides of I didn't call it. Both the sides of this call. Eight, three. Start, starts off with a skip ball is the call, but it doesn't look like Rocky agrees with that. I don't know if what you saw there. I, I saw a skip. I mean, we'll check in on our Panasonic uh, replay, but uh, I thought the ball skipped. Again, diving and re-killing with a backhand nonetheless. It is, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Two points away now. He's, Kane Wazel and Chuck. He's got, the, he's got the hands to go with all the power and the speed and the athleticism. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's like he sees the ball in slow motion. Everybody else sees the ball moving 190 miles an hour. And to his eye... Gee, <laughs> I mean, you can't hit a more flawless ball than that. <laughs> Just flat rolled it. Oh, they thought that good though. Right. Yeah, Rocky I mean, just looking for anything right yeah, now. I mean, it that's, is that's match ball. point. I mean, it is. This is unbelievable. This is match point. And two, two, and three. Wow. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Little gift, little gift from Kane, just to. You want to keep playing? He wants to play. <laughs> you want to keep playing? <laughs> 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 
He's giving the fans just one, ex, one more rally here. Yeah, Rocky like doing some antics. For about three more games. <laughs> Rocky. Rocky says, yeah, I would like to keep playing for about three more games. <laughs> That's a great line, Rocky Carson. Yeah, unfortunately, it. about all he's got right now is lines. Yeah, he needs to get some points here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Kane actually did this Pretty same good. thing to Cliff Swain. In, right. uh, in his little run when he ran when he won three U.S. Open in a row, one zero and three. One zero and three. He did the same thing. He beat Cliff Swain's brains in, and Cliff was, uh, you know, maybe not in his prime, but right out of his prime. And <laughs> Big Kane's just—he's uh, trying to give the crowd some entertainment here. He's going to try to roll that between his legs. I mean, he—he's he, an—he's an entertainer. Kane is an entertainer. Oh, jeez. What is that? Wow. I mean, it's like Rocky can't hold on to his racket or something. He's set up in the service box, and he flails it off the back wall. I mean, if I hadn't known better, I'd have thought he had a broken string. Yeah. I mean, he took a swing, and the ball went six feet in the air off the back wall. Well, here it is. Kane taking his time up in the court, front court there, thinking of a serve, another chance to win this match and win a U.S. Open title. This would be number four. Number four and four in a row for him. Yeah, that's right, four in a row. Not, shot. not yet. Rocky's still hanging around. Yeah, you know, Kane uh, gave him a break there. He had a chance to use his hands and do another fabulous shot, and he hit it. 18 feet high, just so the fans could see another rollout. But let's see if Rocky can put something together. No, see so that's that same. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like he's got a broken string or something. It's, yep. it's really horrible shot. Not gonna get it done against Kane. Yeah, the problem for Rocky now with this match. It, it, yeah, he lost the U.S. Open, but the problem is scar tissue at this point. What I mean by that sure. is when a guy gives you a beating like this, every time you walk on the court with him for the rest of your life, your heart starts to ache as soon yeah. as you step on the court. And oh, look at Kane. Yeah, he's, he's just swinging for the fences. Swinging, right? Yeah, he's swinging for the fences. This is, uh, you know, this is a home run derby for the fans at this point. Right. <laughs> He's going for the spectacular shot. And anyway, back to the scar tissue thing. Uh, that's not that's not uh, untypical from the superstars of the past. Cliff Swain, you know, I used to marvel at him. He would uh, he'd be uh, up two games to zero, five nothing in the in the third. And he'd still be drive serving 200 miles an hour. He think his arm was going to fall off because he just wanted to beat you so bad that for the rest of your life you'd be afraid to step on the court with him. And right. Sudsy did the same thing. Hogan did the same thing. And so this is not, uh, uh, you know, this is not unusual to yeah. see what Kane's doing. He he realizes the long-term scar tissue, the long-term damage that he can cause to uh, Rocky and his other opponents, and, and he's taking advantage of it. So here's another shot, match point. Win U.S. Open. Yep. Another setup. This could be it. Kane was a late shot. He wins the U.S. Open. Hands up. He's the champion. Your mind good, man. Good job, man. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Bottom line: Kane was the champion. Pumping his fist. He's fired up. He's earned it. He, it's going to be a short amount of time before he's number one again. Took two years off, but, man, he has not lost a step. He almost looks better, Doug. Yeah, I'm going to say he does. You know what happened during his absence? Is he made a commitment to training and fitness. And uh, before when he was dominating, it was all natural talent. Now he's got the body, he's got the spirit, and he's got the game. So the next five years is really going to be fun to watch. Right. It's, it's scary what he's going to do, and it's scary what would have happened if he didn't have those two years off. So... Bottom line, we're going to see what Kane Wazalinchuk does in the rest of his career here at the in Racquetball. Because bottom line, he's going to be breaking records, and he very well could be the greatest player of all time. Yep. Stay tuned to the Tennis Channel. Uh, for the next several years, you're going to see some incredible racquetball out of this guy. This guy is uh, he is something special.
All you fans of racquetball, thanks for joining us here at the 2008 U.S. Open Racquetball Championships and the Tennis Channel, Royster Productions, Doug Gannam. Pleasure working with you. Thanks for watching.